Well, thanks, Leo, for joining us at uh, Global Voices. I know you have a very busy schedule and uh, we appreciate your time. So, oh, good to be here. Thank you. Uh, so into the nitty gritty. Video interviews form a large part of your output at Six News. Your interviews with the then opposition leader and now Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and with the 16-year-old Donald Trump supporter Reid Cooper definitely stand out. What exclusives are your favourites? Uh, look, it's hard to create a favourite, uh, especially when I've, we've done so many. Um, and that extent to everyone at Six News, I think every one of our reporters would have done a couple of virtual interviews by now. I think definitely... Uh, in terms of more recently, because I've been lucky enough to so far interview three prime ministers, being Kevin Rudd, Scott Morrison, when he actually was the prime minister, and the now prime minister, Anthony Albanese, as you mentioned there. Definitely, I think the uh, Morrison and Albanese ones, though, were my personal favourites, simply because they were in the middle of the campaign. Uh, and it has really uh, cemented us as a serious news outlet. I don't think there's any politician or politician's media advisor that can reject us on the basis of us not being a major outlet given we uh, managed to grill both of, of them on uh, some pretty uh, different topics for each of them but also some pretty similar ones and uh, I think they were also uh, you know really happy to be on which I, I appreciate from both of them. I um, also, uh, also mentioned that uh, we also interviewed the Greens leader Adam Bant uh, back in early 2022 so not before mm -hmm. so before the official campaign but still um, look we're, we always like interviewing leaders uh, but if I had to pick one I couldn't if I had to pick two I'd pick Scott Morrison and Anthony Albanese. Yep fine. Okay more broadly part of your work as a journalist are you most proud of so far it's 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 a tough question i think i'm because we have a very small team for those who are unaware anyone for those who are unaware rather the people you see on air are the same ones that are working off air um we don't have the benefit of you know specialized editors i, mean, I do the editing for pretty much everything uh I think if I if I had to pick something, I, I would just think presenting our, our Sunday night bulletins, which have been the pretty much only consistent thing since we began in 2019. They've happened with maybe a couple of exceptions because of a public holiday or a, uh, you know, summer break every single Sunday since 2019 and on hundred percent record since maybe 2020 uh and I, I i'm really happy with that i think it's i've developed my skill in a way and it's something i always enjoy and it's as i said our our longest running um program that we have done and we've built up a pretty consistent audience during that entire time and it's yeah every sunday night at 8 p.m eastern and of course anyone can you know catch up after that that's the good benefit of youtube and our yeah. our website too you can watch any time but yeah 8 p.m eastern every sunday is when it will come out yeah i suppose you have to do the uh, work on youtube and tiktok and other places mm. as well uh, yeah lots of it it's you've you have to adapt to different um, uh, social media platforms, our you know followers on Facebook are probably looking for a bit of a bit different content uh, to our followers on TikTok. You know, uh, yeah. but I think we've, as I said, we managed to build up an audience on pretty much all the platforms uh, by doing very different content on all of them. But it's it's working, and the one thing that has stayed consistent throughout all those platforms are our two main, you know, oh, our catchphrase if you want to put it our nice slogan independent and unbiased and we'll stay independent and unbiased on all platforms no matter what content we put out no matter when we put it out etc etc good okay you've already tackled one of my technical questions but um i'll go to the second one it must be expensive to maintain your website how do you finance your operations are you breaking even yeah look it's it's interesting because we have we, originally, maybe until maybe I'd say what mid twenty twenty one, we didn't have really anything coming through. There was a tiny, tiny, and I emphasise tiny bit from uh, YouTube ad money. However, as you can imagine, a lot of our content is not light, fluffy content. Uh, we can't monetize it. If we do, it'll get demonetized, i.e., no money. Uh, mid twenty twenty one, we started a Patreon. 
Um, now, obviously, I'm not going to disclose exact uh, money we're getting in there, but it's 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 fairly sustainable in terms of breaking even. It's a bit hard because we've half our equipment is is you know, everyday stuff. Our, our camera has always just been a phone. Uh, our, our microphones are probably the most basic ones you can find in any shop. So it's it's hard to know whether you've officially broken even, but our, our support from our Patreon supporters is continuing to rise. And, you know, that's incredible that we're actually getting donations to us to actually support our work, which is which is quite incredible. Uh, our website and, and our... Um, and stuff like that. It's it's not too much to maintain. Thankfully, I think the the biggest part of it is yeah, just keeping that domain name because uh, we don't want to go with one that's you know sixnewsau dot wix dot com or dot uh, yeah. uh, wordpress dot com. We want our own unique domain name, and uh, it's it's one that I think a lot of people are uh, memorizing because we originally thought something like you know sixnewsau dot com dot au. Turns out it was taken, but we've managed to keep the consistent uh, you know slogan the entire time. Six News AU, and uh, I, I'm really happy we've managed to do that because people are able to find our work a lot easier if we just keep it nice and consistent. Yeah. On a quite different topic, the traditional mainstream media are often criticised for their lack of diversity, both in content and staff. Your team could hardly be described as stale, but most of them are certainly pale males. Are you trying to address diversity issues in news coverage and how? I think that's a great question. And look, obviously it's a lot harder when you are limited to who you can actually put on your team, being that they've got to be young. They they can't be um, a, a 60-year-old political journalist, no matter how good they might be. They have to be, you know, kind of a high school or, or uni or uni age. So, we're yeah. talking, you know, your early 20s. Now, obviously, as we continue to expand, we're not going to fire our reporters who are a few years older than me just because they've turned a certain age. Um, but going back to that diversity question, yeah, we are obviously trying to make sure our, our newsroom, our metaphorical newsroom, since we all work from home, um, is obviously diverse because it would reflect a, reflect a diverse population. Uh, and it's obviously a challenge in which we're trying to address it um and we've been trying to do that by i guess it's, it's it is easier said than done and there's a lot more we can do and i, I I'm, I'm fully admitting that but uh we are trying to put ourselves out there and promote ourselves and we also try to when um there's an issue maybe on on a topic of of race or a, a minority group we as people who are not in that group if we're not um we speak to the people who are. We don't just report. We actually let them have their say because if we can't report on that ourselves from someone who is in, say, a, a certain racial group, we will speak to people in it about an issue that affects them because you have to let people that uh, have their say if it affects them directly. And I don't think that many news outlets do that that much and yeah I, I think that's a, as I said a great question and um, yeah it's something we are always uh, working to address and uh, definitely I think one, one part of diversity compared to another news outlet though uh, other news outlets though that I think we have beaten them in is uh, definitely age but I would say yeah there's obviously always room for improvement and I, I fully admit that yeah fair enough okay um you're not afraid to mix it with critics of your work and trolls, especially on Twitter. You know, you sometimes drop, drop the F-bomb or whatever. <laughs> I noticed the other day. What is your attitude to the potentially negative side of social media? Oh, look, it's, it's a bit of a sewer at times. Um, sites like Twitter, for example, I think there are great people on it. I think it's an important tool. It's our where we speak to viewers. But yeah, there are some awful people on it. Look, I I I find it disgusting some of the comments, and this extends to journalists, not just at Six News, but at any news outlet. There's often vile, sexist, uh, racist, personal abuse. There's lots of um, blatantly defamatory material. Lots of lies, too, about reports. Lots of accusations of bias without anything to back it up. Um, there are, you know, I couldn't, I can't find a journalist who has not been accused of bias for one side, uh, for only one side. Pretty much everyone I, I am seeing is being accused of being a Labour shill or a Liberal shill or a Green shill or 
or whatever, and we, we get those accusations too. Um, so yeah, I, look, I, in terms of my attitude towards some of the negative side, I just think it's it's disgusting. And look, I I, I try to refrain from from swearing on air and, and online. Uh, I think some people would be uh, surprised at how I might speak in a school setting towards mates, but um, on air, yeah, online rather, uh, you you have to keep it a bit more chill, but uh, sometimes I, 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 I would swear because sometimes it absolutely is, yeah. is relevant to the situation and people just need to lighten up at times. I, I, and I, I do this because, you know, I, I find it personally funny. I, I always put the uh, the occasional joke out there, I'm not voting for insert party here. Yeah. I think I've done that with about every single party possible. I did with the UAP yesterday. I've done that with the ALP today. Uh, and it's always interesting to see who, whether they're a supporter of that particular party or not, will take it lightly and who will absolutely lose their minds and accuse us of bias, even though we can't vote, I can't vote, yeah. and I will not be voting, at least in a federal election, till maybe 2028 is almost certain. So, yeah, I just find it disgusting, and um, unfortunately, yeah, it can be a bit of a sewer at times, but I also think... There are plenty of, of great people on there and people we engage with because as a digital news outlet, we need to have a digital focus and that involves a lot of social media yeah. feedback. And we always welcome feedback and criticism, just not abuse. Yeah. And, of course, Twitter just doesn't get irony. So <laughs> there you go. Um, now, apart from the daily news cycle, you covered national politics and nat natural disasters in particular. How might you broaden your coverage of other topics? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. And obviously, as a national news outlet, we do take into account, um, let's say, what is newsworthy, but definitely what, what is a national importance. We don't report on things like a, a, a car crash in, you know, Melbourne or just a or traffic delays in Sydney because I, I don't think a national audience uh, would would really care if I'm honest if it's not some serious incident um, so we do have a, a strong political focus out of any other topic and but there are obviously many other issues and I guess we, we want to try to broaden them by just as I think I mentioned in the question about diversity before speaking to people who are affected by the issues or who know about the issues who are experts and letting them have their say we want to hear from them we want to actually uh, uncover issues and look deeper into them. I think one great thing about being a digital news outlet and not like a 6pm bulletin having to have a strict one hour rundown, including ads, we've got to make sure we don't go over time, we'll let them speak. We're not going to cut them off. Just And we'll, we'll put out the full interviews as we've done with uh, all our interviews on our show Uncensored. And so I guess how we can broaden our coverage is by making sure we speak to people who are affected. Again, that goes back to the diversity question. But if, if we don't, we are just covering issues that we know nothing about. And I'll be honest, you know, for example, um, I think I covered it last year. We were looking at uh, the end of financial year. Now, I was a 14-year-old, uh, 13 actually back then, uh, no, not much about finances and, and taxes and all that stuff. So we spoke to an expert. We let them have their say. And I think that that was uh, really positive because we don't want to be those reporters who speak about issues we know nothing about because we, we will, you know, get our facts wrong if we always do that. And that's something we always try not to do, get our facts wrong. We always aim to be as accurate as possible. If we do get something wrong, we'll correct it. But yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, you kicked off your first news venture, which was more local, in Hawthorne with investigative journalism such as the School Tower story. You plan to do more in-depth investigations in future? Yeah, look, uh, Six News, just as a, as a bit of background for those who might be unaware, it was started as HMV, local news, that stands for Hawthorne, Melbourne, Victoria. Um, a, a nod to the old call signs that we've seen on TV, you know, your HSV, GTV, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of investigative pieces, yeah, look, the, the Hawthorne Bell Tower one, I think it's it's a classic of mine. I I was amazed because the reaction to that was extraordinary. It somehow got me on 3AW and then uh, the front page of The Age, which was yeah. 
a bit interesting. But yeah, in terms of investigative pieces, there's a lot we can um, focus on, and we'll be definitely doing more of them. We have a new political show if we're talk on on if in terms of political investigative pieces called Spin Check, and we do lots of Spin Check specials and really in depth pieces. There are many others that we can do, uh, but of course, uh, I guess to um, borrow a, uh, a motto from the Australian Electoral Commission. We want to do it right, not rush. We don't want to do a full investigative piece without knowing all the facts and getting it right. So look, we, we never, as I mentioned before, strict to deadlines or rundowns, etc. We will work on something behind the scenes, but we will not rush to pump it out just because we think, oh, it might be more viral this week than another. Okay. Um... Now, you seem to be a sort of glass half full sort of person. How hopeful are you that your generation will take a real interest in what's happening in the world and the challenges facing humanity and the planet? I think that's a great question. And I think a lot of people in my generation do. I was at, for example, uh, one issue that a lot of people talk about is climate change. And I was at the uh, school strike for climate last year as a, as a reporter, mind you, not as a, uh, a protester, though I had some um, uh, schoolmates there uh, who, who were protesting. So I, 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 I think people actually do, uh, in my generation, care about these issues right uh right now now i think there will be more who who begin to you know understand them and care about them you know in the, in the long run but i think right now we're probably seeing uh and it's it's a bit hard to judge but i would say probably the m most amount of young people who who care about issues uh who are you know actual minors you know under the age of 18 and care about issues right now good okay a couple of um questions to finish um, firstly, how do you make the time that must be required for all this work? It's a hard thing to do. And look, if I'm honest, I, I, I struggle at it sometimes. I think especially in like 2020, um, when we were doing remote learning, uh, and this is, we have to remind it, this is, remember, this is the early days of COVID. One case resulted in 48 hours of breaking news. It was an extraordinary time. Uh, so look, I guess I, I struggled then, but in terms of now, I think it's helps that we have a bigger team. I have to do less, for example, overnight. Now, a US correspondent who is in the US can cover a lot of things, um, but I try to do it obviously after school. I try not to do it during the school hours. Um, and then also I, I make sure to take breaks if, if needed, because, you know, I'm still a 14 year old. I have interests outside of, of news and also, you know, just can scroll through social media without having to be looking for some new story. So yeah, it's, it's a bit hard. I don't really know how I make time for it, but I, I, th I think I am. I don't think I've got the balance right yet, but it's, it's getting there. Yeah. You've actually brought me to my last question. Uh, what are your other interests and pastimes that fill your very busy life? Well, scrolling through social media mindlessly is a good classic for us 14-year-olds. Um, apart from that, look, I, I'm a keen follower of the uh, AFL and, and cricket in general. Um, and, you know, that's something for people who follow me on Twitter, I think, you know, I'll I'll post about news, news, and then suddenly it's one hour of just ranting about um you know, the footy or something like that. Yep. So I, I think that's about that, that. That's about it. At the same time, you know, I, I will, you know, look at things and look at issues and I'll use that term lightly, but things that are just trending on social media that aren't news have nothing to do with news, but you know, I'll, I'll follow them. I don't tweet about them because I know people aren't really interested in them, but uh, yeah, it's, it's again, it's, it's hard to manage when you've got what is essentially when you're making, you know, some, money from it almost the job these days at the age of 14 in year nine it's yeah as i said a hard thing to manage in both time management and also doing other things but yeah um yeah if i, if I had to pick in in one word i'd just say 40 that's that's about it <laughs> i i definitely identify with all of that um as you'd find out from my twitter feed too um mm. it does remind me of one final thing if you could interview anybody in the world and it doesn't have to be about a news story. Um, who would you choose? That is a great question. Um, and it's if it's I, I could give you a list about you know a hundred people. If I had to pick one right now living, uh, I would say 
I don't know who I'd say. Um, jeez, it's it's hard because I'm. Th- you think, oh, you know, what would be the best piece to get tough questions out, or you know, um, get a scoop. I don't. Vladimir Zelensky, I'd say him. That might be it in terms of what I'm thinking right now. And of course, there's a question probably relevant to now. My answer would probably be different. You know, six months ago, I'd say Vladimir Zelensky. Um, and there's there's a lot I could ask him about. Um, the Ukrainian um, leader there. So yeah, if I had to pick one, yeah, as I said, very hard. But look, I could give you a list of you know, as I said, a hundred. In terms of Australian politics, I would always like to interview um, the remaining living former prime ministers. That being, of course, well, I've interviewed Rudd and well, I can say Morrison's a former prime minister now. But um, Tony Abbott, uh, Malcolm Turnbull, uh, John Howard, and Paul Keating, I think, would also be people I am absolutely. Um, wanting to interview and ones that are a bit more realistic than Vladimir Zelensky, but yeah. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Well, thank you, Leo. That's been great. Um, Thank you for joining us at Global Voices and uh, we'll certainly be following your career and uh, your website with interest in the future. No problem. Thanks for the uh, opportunity to chat and uh, always happy to chat anytime. Thank you.